Uh, Entschuldigung, mein Deutsch ist nicht gut. Even though my name is German. Mr. President, special guests from BMBF and University of Saarland, thank you for showing how adeptly you could deliver a theme, and I will choose one as well. My colleagues and friends, and Herr Professor Dr. Wolfgang Walster. <laughs> to be able to capture what some of you have shown already, talking about accomplishments um, with a certain amount of humor and goodwill, it's not easy to do without a, a word that I'm going to use repeatedly to explain what I want to explain about my, my friend and colleague. Um, so you use the word schnell, which is important. I would maybe use two other words. One is, um, I was looking for an appropriate translation of, of the English word tall into German, and all I could get was maybe hach or, or grosse or sehr grosse. But instead, I will choose, uh, choose the word abstraction. And the reason abstraction is important because I have to say what I understood already um, about Wolfgang, factor out what everyone has said already, and do it in a very short time. My time is nearly up. <laughs> no. So on the tall part, with respect to um, uh, Schnell, I first met Wolfgang in 1987. And I want to use a, a universal language abstraction, which I will illustrate like this. I first met Wolfgang on the other end of a volleyball net in a swimming pool in Cancun in 1987. I think the bruise is gone, but that's how I met Professor Walster the first time, with a volleyball coming over the net down here. <laughs> so, ha, Zergrosa, very tall. I've come to use that a lot when I speak about my colleague and friend. Um, for example, um, and several of the conferences I've been to at, at one international conference, one of my Italian friends came up to me and said, you have an astonishing breadth and depth of knowledge. I thought maybe he was talking about someone else, but that was exactly the time that I would think about what I've learned from <laughs> Professor Volster. Um, I think what you've heard in descriptions of the things that he has contributed to and that he has mentored students and colleagues with is an astonishing breadth and depth of knowledge. Um, so whenever somebody compliments me, I frequently think of my friend and say, well, I have this model. He knows an incredible amount, and he's taught me a lot about what it means to be an information scientist. I'll give you a few examples. Um, his leadership in information science, informatics, computer science, uh, is known pretty well around the world, and I often run into people because I travel nearly as much as Professor Volster. And, and we always see input from people around the globe. I'll say a little bit about that in a second. But he has given years of leadership, and, and I just am so thankful he's not finished because I'm gonna leave you with three tough problems that I know he can help with. Now, I want to say a little bit about, about influence internationally because of where I come from. So in Canada, I am in a jurisdiction not so dissimilar to a state of Germany, um, that is the province of Alberta, where we enjoy incredible natural resources. Um, each time someone does an assessment of the hydrocarbon reserves in Alberta, it comes out larger and larger. Last week, I found out about hydrocarbon reserves that are almost completely untapped that double the estimates of the hydrocarbon reserves in Alberta, which is already third in the world next to Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. So only by mere trillions of barrels. 
Now, th this is interesting for a couple of reasons, and you'll see why when I talk about data in just a second. It's because it's generated enormous wealth in the provincial jurisdiction, and we all know that when politicians enjoy um, surplus budgets, the easiest place to invest surplus budgets is into education, research, and health. That is where Alberta spends most of its money. Now it's starting to spend its money in reducing um, the volume of hydrocarbon required to have lights, to have energy. Um, in Alberta, we've recruited Professor Bolster to help us, and we're in the midst of redesigning our innovation system to diversify. Uh, that's a word that echoes in every language and jurisdiction, is to not have or rely on only one natural resource. DFKI has been a leading model, and the execution of how DFKI has evolved with my friend Wolfgang as its leader has been nothing short of amazing. Um, you should all look at a summary of studies on how to build innovation systems. And while Canada is not Germany and Alberta is not Saarland, um, there is a lot to learn and we continue to learn by engaging um, Professor Volster to explain to us how this amazing partnership in Saarland and in Germany and Europe has worked. So we're very lucky to have his help and from time to time we get him skiing in the, in the um, Rocky Mountains, which are one of my favorite parts of Alberta. So now I'm going to end by saying a few things that we need help with still, and the help comes from the kind of information scientists that have been mentored and developed with Wolfgang's leadership. So let me give you three problems. They're very difficult problems, and I love to work on difficult problems. The three are understanding the universe, understanding humans and biology, and understanding the earth. This isn't like the joke with what, how many mathematicians are there? There's three kinds, those who understand numbers, those who don't. No, it's not that. <laughs> um, so abstraction now becomes a very important word because we've gathered together for only a few hours to talk about my colleague's accomplishments over the first phase of his career, that is, to date. So let me give you these examples. The Square Kilometer Array Project of Astrophysicists in the World has finally been confirmed to be constructed partly in Australia, partly in South Africa. Um, it's projected at its height to generate 10 gigabits of data a second, or 864 terabytes a day. Think about that for a second. The most sophisticated um, technologies for sequencing DNA, which most of us have, are the ones that come from IBM. A DNA transistor, which is basically a really tiny tube that you drag DNA through and you can count the pieces as they go by. You can count those pieces at 0.5 gigabits of base pairs per second. That's in one tiny nano capillary. So my arithmetic says that's gonna be with even just one machine, which are cheap, they will be very cheap, um, 43 terabytes a day, about 43. The last one is one that, that we're spending a lot of time on in, in Alberta because of the hydrocarbons. Um, and all I can say is that the combination of environmental sensors from flux towers, sensors, satellites, imaging, um, deployable wireless sensor networks, uh, biodiversity sensors, the whole range of them, uh, just recent description 2012. The data generated by current environmental sensors exceeds by two the world's capacity to store digital data. Can't you just imagine the biologists, the astrophysicists, and the environmentalists fighting over disk space? <laughs> so, to end is to note that I try to think of the computer science approach to these big problems, and every time I think I've got an idea, Wolfgang has a bigger idea. <laughs> right? 
So the, the legacy that Wolfgang leaves will be with people that have spoken, because no matter how we think about our information science, Wolfgang always leads us to think bigger. And I think that's what I want to leave you with. Sehr große. Dankeschön.